Finals are done. Space Revenge of Force is released. Okay, enough funny videos. My name is Garrett and I recently released my game Space Prevention Force. This video is going to be a post-mortem about my whole experience making the game as well as a bit of a channel update. My last post-mortem was about like 20 minutes long and honestly this one might be a bit longer. Thankfully I've scripted a lot of it but it's like it's like 12 pages and it will probably be randomly anyway so uh so we'll see what happens. I want to value you guys time so I'm going to give you a little bit of a brief summary of everything I'm about to say so if you don't want to watch after that perfectly fine the good about my game was the art using other sound assets the code making devlogs as well as the commanders the bad was polishing marketing discord no creativity and a lack of planning along the way i've struggled with balancing life imposter syndrome as well as a learning gap for my next game i'm going to be more creative not be afraid to use other assets and plan well. The devlogs will be a little bit different for the next few weeks, but starting in June, they will be back on track for my next game. All right, so no worries if you don't want to watch the whole thing. I know it's probably gonna be pretty long, but if you do want to watch, sit back, relax, and listen to me talk about my game for a long time. <laughs> also, I'm probably not going to have any graphics, so if you want to listen to this like a podcast, you're more than welcome. Okay, here we go. First, I'm going to give a little summary if you guys are new or just kind of came in the middle. Uh, just talking about what's been happening the past eight months while I've been developing Space Prevention Force. I started working on the game September of 2019 and finished and released it this past May of 2020. I'm a college student, I'm a martial artist, and a bunch of other things as well I like to do with my time. And so I spent roughly around a two to three hours per week on the game. Additionally, I was the only person working on the game aside from a few sound assets that I bought. I also make devlogs every week which I did with this game as well. The game is a 2D pixel art tycoon game where your goal is to save alien lives that I released for free on itch.io. That's the basic gist of what has happened these past eight months with at least the game. Uh, so now I'm gonna talk about sort of a, my thoughts on what has happened these past eight months, the good, the bad, and just kind of generally what I've thought. So starting with the good, first off is the art. Now I'm not considering myself a good artist, but I am pretty happy with the art direction of the game. I did spend a decent amount of time setting the color palette and making sure everything fit together and was consistent, and I think that really paid off in the end. Overall, I'm liking looking at like the green, yellow, blue, red, and purple, kind of like a happy, wonderful rainbow of Space Adventure Force. <laughs> I could have added a bit more juice and better particle effects and animations, but overall, I like the art. Next is using sound assets. So. All of the sound and music from the game, aside from what I did with the, the tutorial and the voices, uh, all comes from various Humble Bundle assets that I've gotten over the years. I really like the background music and the sound effects fit really well with the game. Now, I'm not saying that I'm happy that I use someone else's assets. I, I mean, I kind of am, but I'm, I'm happy that I sort of, I guess, swallowed my pride in a way and, and decided not to do it myself and rather have someone else do it way better than I could ever do it. For most of my game dev career, I've kind of been like a purist or a, a one-man band where I kind of like to do everything myself. Now, I, I do like doing mostly everything myself, but for one, I'm never going to be great at any of it if I just do all of it. And two, that I don't exactly like all the aspects equally. Like, for example, I probably like programming the best, followed pretty close by art. And then somewhere down lower in the totem pole is sound. I'm not really a musically inclined person, to be honest, and I really don't know the programs that well to make music, and I don't really care to learn as much, so it's kind of kind of pointless for me to make music at this point, or, or sound. I'm definitely going to use other people's sound assets, at least with the proper credit, uh, for my next game, uh, because it's better than what I can make, and that way I can focus on the stuff I really want to work on. Next is the code, and I should probably call this the better section rather than the good section because it's i mean it's not good but compared to my past games it's good code <laughs> although i didn't do a whole lot of documentation my code has generally improved over time i'm definitely more aware of what i'm doing with my code just trying to focus on optimizing a little bit more i'm using some more structures i haven't really used before like inheritance um, and singletons and overall i'm just i feel like it's better i'm not like off to snuff with if i were to work on a team like if i worked on a team they probably think my code is horrible, but for me, it's better, and that's good. Next is devlogs. Yeah, go 
go figure. <laughs> the vlogs have been a really great way for me to get feedback on the game as well as serve as some sort of marketing material. They also serve as motivation as although there's some weeks that I've honestly probably spent more time on the devlogs than the actual game, the devlogs are kind of what pushed me anyway so I feel like I couldn't have made as much progress on the game without them. I think early on it was a great thing to, to do weekly devlogs because I was making a lot of progress early on but as it sort of got to later stages of development especially like the last month maybe even two when it slowed down it was kind of hard to make devlogs sometimes because i didn't feel like there's enough content uh, so that was sometimes a little bit of a struggle that being said i think the positives of making devlogs way outweighed the negatives and i'm really happy that i'm doing them and the final good thing is the commanders so if you guys didn't know i have two sort of main characters in space adventure force which is the human and robot commanders are sort of the leaders of each teams and throughout the devlogs, at least most of them, they kind of talk to you guys like they were characters along with me telling you about what I was doing. Now, I didn't always have them in every devlog, at least saying stuff, but I did. I thought it was really cool. I feel like it kind of connects the game to the player a little bit more uh, while having the characters sort of interact with you guys in a way. I mean, I know it's, it seems kind of cheesy, but I think it's a kind of a cool experience. I almost imagine it kind of like Disney World, how when at least when you're a young kid and you go to Disney World and you see these characters in real life, like it's kind of in Disney terms like a magical moment. And I'm not saying like I'm at that Disney level, I'm not even close. But I think it's on the right track and I think it's kind of cool. I'm definitely gonna stick with this idea in the future and definitely improve upon it for my next game. Alright, so now the bad of this game. The first is the polish. Now I did spend time on the polish, I'm not gonna say I didn't spend any, but there definitely could have been more. Some of the animations like with the notifications were a little weird. Different like button press combinations if you did it out of order or not in the right way were kind of janky and the UI definitely could have been improved. And and so when I look at it, I can instantly tell it's a Unity game. Now that's not a bad thing per se. Like and I, let me be clear, like I love Unity. But I feel like whenever you look at a game and you can tell like it's made with Unity, it, it at least like with the past with those like asset flips and stuff, it sort of gives it a bad rap, I feel like, and it, it makes it feel not as polished. Like if you're reusing the default sprites in, in Unity, it kind of just looks off to the player. At least that's how I feel. Like whenever I'm playing a game that feels really good, it's, it's normally well polished where maybe the core experience isn't necessarily the most entertaining, but if the game as a whole feels polished and like really put together, then that makes the experience for me much better. I did a good amount of bug fixing and some optimization, but I feel like overall I could have spent a lot more time on the polish and just making the overall experience better for the player. Next is marketing. Now I will be completely honest, I don't, I, I didn't really care too much about how well the game did. Um, I mean obviously I care a bit and inevitably if I want to do this as like a career I, I need to care about them, um, but I feel like there's so much to learn. I had to learn about just the process of, of just making the game that I didn't really focus a whole lot on the marketing. I did do some marketing, like doing devlogs every week was kind of a good form of marketing, at least for me. Um, and that's that was a way where I could get a lot of feedback too. But I didn't really do any marketing to like new players. Like really all I did, I really um, just posted on LinkedIn. I post my videos, my devlogs every week. And that's more for me as like a personal brand, as a potential career opportunity and there's really not people looking to play games on LinkedIn. I'm really happy with the trailer to be honest but I didn't really post it that many places so it didn't really get that much reach and I didn't really have a set marketing plan which is why nothing really happened with that. Next is Discord. Yeah okay so Discord is by no means a complete failure like I, I really like the community that's on the Discord like I know I'm, I feel like I'm in other people's discords and when I'm in my own um, but I really like what the Discord community uh, has done. I really appreciated people like like Rob, Games and House, uh, Sam, Jojo, uh, Potato Aim, Ben, I have oh, like Daniel. I got a lot of you guys. Um, like those of you who, like were pushing com conversations in the Discord. Like that was that was really cool. I I was happy with that, like the community interaction. But I had more planned for the Discord. Um, I watched this GDC talk by Mike Rose, how using using Discord to sort of build hype for the game and sort of get the community interactive. And I wanted to do something like that with this game. Um, I sort of did it, how I was setting the different roles on different teams with the commanders, which was kind of cool. 
but I didn't really end up doing anything with that, at least to what I originally had planned. So Discord's something I definitely want to continue exploring, but I got to get more into it and really plan it out and know exactly what I want to do with it. Next is that there is no creativity. So I think I've said this in one of my first few devlogs or a couple times throughout, is that this game, Suits Prevention Force, was mostly inspired by games that I really like playing, uh, such as Theme Hotel and Corporation Incorporated. And this, although it was different, like some of the mechanics were a bit different, um, it was basically just a clone of those games, just with a different theme, like a space theme, and there was, really wasn't much different about it. And because there wasn't anything different or creative with it, I guess I sort of lost that creative drive, which not only spilled over into the game, but into the devlogs, where, the, like, sometimes I did some different stuff in my devlogs, where I do skits or just, like, funny stuff or, or random stuff, but as I just kept working on the game and, and really just didn't feel that inspired, it kind of just came to my devlogs where I just kind of did the standard thing. Although I think there's benefits in making clones because it's, it's probably a lot easier to end up making it. Uh, I'm, I feel like I'm a little past that stage in a way, or at least for what I want to make with a game. I want something that creatively inspires me. Like I, I consider myself a generally creative person and that's sort of what inspires me doing stuff differently and creatively. And by making a game that didn't really challenge me creative, it wasn't as fun and that's i mean that's not that's not cool and the last bad thing and honestly probably the worst thing is the lack of planning and to be honest this might actually be the root cause of all the past bad things now i did make a trello board a game design document and i also updated the trello board after the demo on the surface this looks great but to be honest i felt like i made them all poorly and i really was not organized when I would sit down to work on the game for however long in the day, I'd normally either work on something I worked on the previous day or just work on something I just randomly thought of or just thought needed to be done. And this sort of resulted in me not spending as much time on the important things and spending more time than needed on the not important things. I did get the core of the game done, like I'm happy with that, but there was a lot of extras and side content that I didn't get done. Like there was more I wanted to do with like the leechers, the different obstacles, stuff with the background environment, uh, different stuff with the stats that I kind of just never got around to doing because I didn't really have that plan laid out to do them. I honestly just felt aimless a lot uh, where it was almost like demotivating me at a point uh, where I, I just didn't know exactly what needs to be done. and. I, I could always, I guess, just like reorganize and restructure what I need to get done. But I, I felt like it was sort of at this stage in development where it's kind of later on where I was just like, I just want to finish. I just want to get this done and over with and move on. And th that's definitely not the best way to do it. Um, it's kind of sucks that I did it that way. Um, but that's honestly just kind of how I felt about it. Like, don't get me wrong. I still care about the game and, and still did and, and still do. Like, I'm, I'm really happy with it. But... I just really could not imagine spending like three more months on it, um, at least in its current state. And I think a lot of that's due to just the bad planning and, and disorganization with it. Okay, so I'm going to move on to what I learned for my next game uh, in a second. But I first kind of wanted to say some more general thoughts I had. This is going to be a little bit, I guess, more raw. And I couldn't exactly fit them into the previous category, so I'm just going to it's going to kind of talk for a bit and then we'll move, move on to other sections. This isn't necessarily bad stuff. It's kind of just what I'm feeling and kind of what I just like when I get off my chest per se, I guess just to say it and sort of reconcile it. If that makes sense. Um, if that, if that's a word, but um, all right. Yeah, so the first thing is just balancing of life. Um, so I, I don't really talk a whole lot about my personal life as much in the devlogs. It's kind of just mainly focused on game development outside of like showing me clips doing karate training. Um, I don't really talk a lot about what I do outside of it, um, but I just kind of want to give a little bit brief background because this won't make sense without it. So first, I'm a college student. Um, I'm studying electrical and computer engineering, and I know I signed up for it, um, but engineering is a hard major, so that takes up a lot of my time. I'm also a martial artist. Um, I'm a student and a teacher, and I normally train in some capacity like five to six days a week. Um, and coming back home from from school to, to go back and do that, that takes up time as well. I also do VR and AR research uh, through my school, um, which I, I don't really do a whole lot during the semester, but more so during the summers, but that still takes up time as well. I also have family, friends, and just 
other general stuff going on that takes up my time throughout the day and throughout the week. And I'll be honest, like most people, I do like to spend time relaxing, just you know, watching TV, watching YouTube, or obviously playing video games. And, and let me just be clear, I'm not complaining. Like I'm not complaining about that. This is, I signed up for all of this or at least, I think I signed up for all this, yeah. Um, I'm not complaining, but this is just kind of my situation and I am like happy with that. Like I, I want to do all this, like I want to do all this and more to be honest. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that by wanting to do all this, there needs to be a balance or else I'm not gonna be able to do all of it. Like there's, there's no way I'm gonna be like a straight A student, like the best martial artist, uh, the best game developer making the best videos. There, there, like I'm be able to, to work like 40 hours a week. Like there's, there's no way that's gonna, gonna happen. Like I don't have that time. And like, I, I think I'd like to be busy. Like I, I don't normally sit around that often. Like, yeah, there's sometimes I just sit around for a bit and play video games, but I, I feel like there's never really a day where I, I'm not doing anything where like, if like, I'm usually like, there's a day if I'm doing something like it's rather in a day, I usually have something to do, whether it's like homework or, or do a devlog or, or go to karate. Um, like I want to do all that most of the time with, with homework, it depends, but um, I'm usually not saying still that often. So essentially what I'm realizing with that is I kind of need more of a focus where I'm not, I know I'm not gonna be able to do all of that. I'm not gonna be like great at everything. And I think the way to sort of, I guess, allow me, well, I guess, almost counterintuitively is to not be great at everything and just try to focus down a little bit more on what what I really want so I'm trying to figure that out exactly I feel like it kind of changes like I I feel like I'm someone with really rapidly changing interests or not necessarily rapidly changing but changing interests and and many interests which doesn't exactly help for focus um but I, I think I'm they're generally pretty similar um, and I'm just kind of really trying to figure it out and, and focus on that. So again, I'm not complaining. I just really want to focus on progressing in whatever I want to do. Um, and honestly, like at least like right now, it seems like that's like game development and, and martial arts. Um, but who knows, that may change in the future. Um, but I just really want to focus on the balancing of things. Um, making sure, again, I like don't get burnt out as well. That's another thing that I, I really don't suffer with that much because... I'm doing, I'm not like spending like 14 hours a day making games every day. Like I'm, I'm like in school for a bit and I'm doing karate and I'm doing game dev and I'm doing like whatever else. Um, so it's not burnout in that sense, but I just really need to, to learn how to balance my time better and, and focus on what I really want to do. All right. So the next thing is what's called imposter syndrome. So I'm looking at, I looked this up from Google, uh, imposter syndrome, the definition is the persistent inability, sorry, the persistent inability to believe that one success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as a result of one's or one's own efforts or skills. And I've definitely felt this. I've definitely felt this in the past and and throughout the development of this game as well. And so to, I guess put it in layman's terms is is imposter imposter says <laughs> imposter syndrome is where you kind of don't feel like you deserve where you're at like you don't deserve what you have or, or where you sort of stand um or what you sort of come off as and i've definitely felt that if you've noticed or picked up in my devlogs i don't really do a whole lot of like teaching or, or telling you guys exactly what i did and if i do I'm, i kind of preface it i'm like hey you know this is a way to do it but it's not the best way it's just it's just one way and that's kind of because of imposter syndrome where I, I don't feel like I'm at this level with with game development and everything to be able to to really give good information now I obviously know that I have more knowledge than beginners like I, I've been making games on and off for like five years and consistently for like a, a little over a year um and I know I, I definitely have knowledge that other people don't have and I could contribute and, and benefit people by sharing it but I, I just feel like be, because I don't necessarily know the the best way of doing things and I'm feel like I'm still learning a lot myself I don't exactly feel comfortable teaching it so if you look at me like for karate for example um, I'd consider myself a good teacher there 
because not only have I been teaching it for like five or six years, but I've been a student for like almost 16 now. And like, I know, I know the style and I'm not saying I know everything, but I, I've been around a lot. I've been practicing a lot and I really feel like I know it. And I just, I don't feel like I'm at that stage with game dev yet where I'm, I almost feel like I, I can really call myself an intermediate. Like I know I've made games. I've made several games, um, but I just don't feel like I'm at this level where I feel exactly comfortable, like teaching it and really considering myself like a, like a, I, I want to say like a source of knowledge. That sounds selfish. Like I'm not considering myself that. Um, but I just don't feel like I'm at that level yet. Additionally, with like the game itself, if I'm being completely honest, I, I don't think it was that great. At least of what like the comments are saying. Like I don't, I don't think it's as good as I, I'm hearing it is. And and let me let me just be clear. <laughs> let me be clear. I super appreciate the comments. Like I've been getting some awesome comments, like from Discord, some private messages, um, people like sharing the game in their videos, like great comments on itch. Like I'm super happy with that. Like the comments just made my day. Um, especially that I was like that day I released it. I was working like most of the day on um on a project and just seeing those comments afterwards. It was it was just really heartwarming. Um, um, so what I mean is is that. I feel like I'm generally kind of hard on myself. I think a lot of people are, but I feel like I'm hard on myself, um, I guess, more often than I should be. Um, and I guess I feel like the game should be better, if that makes sense. Um, and so I guess when I look at it, I, I I look at it more so for what it could be than rather what it is. Like, I need to realize that I made a game like, which not a lot of people do. I, I've made, like, a bigger game than I at least had before. This is my biggest one. Um, and arguably most successful in at least uh, how I feel about it. Um, and, like, not a lot of people do that, and I should be proud of it. Um, but I, I guess I just feel like it could be better, and that's sort of where that imposter syndrome is coming, where I maybe should feel more proud about it. I think imposter syndrome is always going to be with me in some capacity, but I kind of just need to learn to... I just be more proud of it. Like I'm, like don't get me wrong. Like I'm, I'm happy. Like I'm, I'm super happy uh, with the, the game and just life in general. Um, but I, I sort of just need to be more proud of it and, and not sort of, I guess, think less of it than it really is. Um, which is, it, it sound it probably sounds weird saying that, but it, it's kind of hard for me. Um, so I'm hoping to improve upon that at least somewhat. And the last thing I kind of want to talk about um, with my general thoughts is what I'm calling the learning gap. Um, so basically, whenever I, I sit down to work on the game, um, whether it's for like 15 minutes or, th or 30 minutes, like say if I work the game on 30 minutes, I don't want to spend that 30 minutes like watching a tutorial. Like I want to spend that 30 minutes like making something. And so what I often feel like is whenever I'm, I'm working on something, like I will like check forum posts and documentation, but but I I really don't like sitting down and watching the tutorial during the time I feel like I should be working on the game itself and actually making something, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But I feel like I've sort of hit kind of this wall where like I, I know you need at least decently well, like I know my way around it and I know my way around code, um, at least in like Unity's code. And I feel like with a lot of stuff when I was making the game, I at least knew where to start, where I didn't need to like watch a whole tutorial like through of something. I could really, like I knew like, whatever mechanic I was working on, I could sort of visualize it in a sense and be like, okay, I think this is how I'm gonna structure it. I just maybe need to know like what's the, like the function to do this or, or, you know, the sort of way to structure, um, something. So it's, I guess, dynamic or, or something like that. Um, and so I knew like what to do and, and sort of how to do it, but I just didn't know the best way to do it all the time. Some of the stuff I did with like the management, especially with the scenes was a little weird. I didn't have like the, the text properly set up with like the UI and like having that update as well as like something 
for if I were to do like localization, like that was not going to happen with the current state of my code and stuff. Um, and this is probably a lot because I felt like there's this gap because I knew like what to do, but I just didn't know the best way to do it. And that sort of, that sort of gap, I feel like that kind of negatively influenced the game. Like I do think there's a lot to be learned from actually like delving in headfirst and, and making the game. But I feel like I'm at this wall where I need to sort of spend time learning more about like what Unity can do and, and what sort of data structures there are and and how I can improve. So at least I know more that's possible where I don't think what I, I know how to do is sort of the limit, if that makes sense. Um, so I, I think I just really need to spend more time like learning, um, learning not only the stuff I know how to do that, but and like reinforcing that, but learning more stuff so I can make future stuff even better. Okay, yeah, this is turning into a long video. <laughs> okay, all right, next, um, I'm gonna talk about what I've learned for my next game. The first is to plan, like I'm going to thoroughly plan. Now I'm not gonna extremely thoroughly, like <laughs> extremely thoroughly plan. Um, I'm not gonna spend like months and months on it, but at least a few weeks. Like I kinda wanna lay out like, I want to lay out like a task-based system. Um, I'll lay out like a timeline of when I'm going to accomplish stuff. Um, lay out like exactly what's going to the game, so I really know what to expect for the course of development. I feel like this is important because my development cycle is sort of spread out over a long period of time. It's not like it's a sprint where I'm working like one week on the game, where it's like a game jam where I really don't plan a lot for game jams. But I was working on the game for eight months, and that's something you really need like the plan for like it's having it's like having a baby like you got to plan for that i mean okay i don't i i, have, I don't have a baby but I, that's from what i okay i'm just gonna move on like i want to be able to open my laptop up and just i have like 15 minutes to work on it and be like okay let me do this like i want to know exactly what i want to do rather than spending like 15 minutes figuring out what should i do i'm not sure exactly how i'm going to plan it my next game yet um I might do a, another game design document. I might do like Trello again. I might do like hack and plan. Um, there's different resources I can use, but I'm gonna make sure whatever I do, I'm gonna plan it and I'm gonna have a good idea of what to expect. The next is to don't be afraid to use assets. And I'm, and I'm not, but I just wanna be less afraid of it. Um, I'm definitely gonna use sound assets for my next game um, because like I said, can't make sound. Um, and I might use other assets. I mean, it's gonna be kind of hard because with code, it's, I mean, you sort of can for certain things, but not as a whole. And I personally want to do the art myself because um, I want to get better at it and I just generally like to do it. Um, so probably sound will be the biggest thing I use assets for. We'll, we'll see about like the animation and, and um, like design. I might try to make it so that it's simplified anyway so that even if I do like m more animation, that it's simple enough that I can do it. Um, but we'll see how that turns out. I just want to know that if it comes to it, where if I can use someone else's assets and it's better, then maybe I should. Next is that I want to spend more time on the game. Now, not necessarily like more time throughout the week, although I mean, I'd like to, um, but I think I'm going to have a longer timeline. It's probably going to be a combination where I spend more time during the week as well as a longer timeline because I kind of want to make bigger games than I made with this. Like I didn't even fully complete what I had set out for this, which I mean, again, planning, but I think I want to make bigger stuff, which means I'm going to need to spend more time on it. I actually did a, a rough calculation. Um, so I, I worked on this game for eight months and roughly two to three hours per week on it, which totals to about 80 hours in total, which is kind of funny because that does not seem like a lot. Like that's two full working weeks all compressed like from eight months it doesn't feel like a lot um and so i kind of want to spend more time than that on it on my next game because it, it should be bigger like I, I do have a tendency to want to work on smaller projects like for example i'm on this is now episode 67 of my devlog series and i've made three games throughout the course of these devlogs there's some people who have more than 67 devlogs who are still working on one game now none of us are wrong um, but I, I think I generally like to work on smaller products where I like sort of deadlines and like to finish stuff. Um, but that might be changing. Um, 
and that might be for the better so that I can actually end up making better end products. And the last thing I've learned is to make games that challenge me and inspire me. I guess what I'm saying to that point about no creativity with the game is that I don't want to make clones anymore. Like I want to make something sort of new and fresh. And, and it's probably going to be more so in a style of where I combine more elements, like some elements from different, many different games and combine it into one and make it different. Um, but I don't want to make something that's like exactly like another game. Although at this point, like it's very hard to make a game that's completely original. I don't necessarily want that, but I want to make, I want to combine stuff so that it feels original. Like there's some stuff I'm planning for my next game that's different and, and new, at least for me too. Um, and it's kind of exciting. Like there's some stuff I honestly don't really know how to start with yet. While that's kind of scary, that's also kind of exciting because it's new and it's definitely going to challenge me and challenge me creatively cre creatively as well um which to be honest does sound like a lot of fun all right so now i'm going to give a little bit of a channel update so you know what to expect for the next few weeks as well as the following weeks after that <laughs> okay so first about what's going to happen the next few weeks now let me be clear the devlogs are not going away um they're definitely not going away but they will be a little bit different for the next few weeks so for the month of May, I want to focus on on learning, planning, and just getting organized, um, which I think is great with this current situation. Um, but like what I talked about, the past things that I've learned from, I kind of just want to focus on a lot of that, just getting my mind set, um, like learning more and just getting organized and planning out my next game and just being really clear. I'm probably going to end up doing like a bunch of Unity tutorials, like following along with stuff and just trying out new stuff. Um, and I'll probably be sharing that as well. Um, the devlogs will probably look like like there'll be less game development per se um but i'll probably show like stuff i've been learning uh stuff i'm planning out organizing um and maybe some sneak peeks at my next game stuff and so what i'm doing after this next few weeks which i'm gonna time it out right now it's gonna be june so at the start of june that's when i plan to get started on my next game now also at the start of june um we're actually for for next year or rather for the next two years um i'm gonna be living in the house uh with some guys uh some of my friends um for college and the lease starts in june like june 1st and i'm gonna have my own room there and i'm gonna make it sort of like my studio where i'm gonna set it up and and make it really nice for for filming stuff and just have everything nice and set up I guess like sort of my problem right now is that I don't really have like a dedicated space and it's kind of a hassle for me sometimes to set up stuff. Um, so by having like a studio, everything already set up, it's not gonna be like a, a super studio. Like it's not gonna be anything really fancy or at least not at the start. Um, but like having that set up, it's definitely gonna help me out. Just be more able to record more stuff as well as more high quality stuff. I think with my devlogs, like they're not as high quality as I'd like them to be. And I feel like with this new space, um, potentially it could help me improve the quality a lot. Um, so I'm really excited for that. But so regardless, at the start of June, I will start development on my next game and showing that in my devlogs. Now for the next game itself, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about it, um, mostly because I, I don't know exactly what it is. Um, I know I have a lot of ideas. Like I literally... I have like a, a Google Doc with like 23 pages of just ideas and they're all around like the same thing like they're generally pretty related um, but I really need to go like go through them all and, and really figure out what I want the game to be but I generally know exact like I generally know what the gameplay will be like and I know mostly what it will look like um, but I don't want to share a whole lot about that yet because I want to make a proper like intro video um, which will probably be the first devlog in June. I will say this though as a hint for people who are also like watching this probably like 40 at least 30 minute plus video um it is a 3d game it will have a story element to it and right now i'm sort of nicknaming it puppeteer all right the last thing i'm gonna do before i finish off this video is i really want to say thank you to all of you especially you guys who are like still watching that's that's crazy um i, I could guess who is still watching um and you probably know that i would guess you um which i, I super appreciate like those people like i previously mentioned as well and, and more like the people in the discord people always commenting um like you know who you guys are um i i don't necessarily want to shout specific names out again um because i don't want to miss people um 
but but like all of you guys who have commented and just given me like this huge positive support it's been it's been super awesome like it's really like doing these devlogs and and sharing it with you guys is is truly what what motivates me and i and i love it and like like what i said sort of with the imposter syndrome and how you guys are giving like these super great comments about the game like saying you're addicted like saying you're gonna like punch some leechers how like it's so much fun like that's that's awesome like that's that's so cool like honestly that's that's so cool to people like to make something and and like connect with you guys like it's it's super cool to like to like message some of you guys on discord and and just sort of like talk to you guys like as friends like i know uh, i mean some some of actually you guys um i have like live chatted with um but i've i've never seen any of you guys and not really talked much outside of like the devlogs themselves but i i truly feel like i know you guys like you guys feel like friends and it, it's so cool it really is cool and it's just so supportive and i love this community um and that's why i'm, I'm still doing the devlogs like I, I love it so much like it, it's so great and it's kind of sad to be like releasing a game and, and finishing it up um but like i'm still doing these devlogs like don't get me wrong i'm still doing this um but it, it's kind of like seeing everything culminate and, and finish is kind of sad but it's also great because it gets to start again and and hopefully we get new people here and and make new friendships and a bigger community and a better community um and it's super awesome so i, I really just got to thank you guys for that um it, it definitely it it super means the world to me like there definitely have been times where i've just like teared up reading some of your comments like just teared up just like thinking about how awesome this is um, like I'm not super huge. Like I'm at like 235, 36 subscribers, um, which is like again I'm super proud of. But it's not huge, and I honestly don't really care too much. Like I I'm just happy that it's quality. Like that there's people who I know consistently watch, and I consistently watch as well, and that's what matters. Like I think the depth of the community. Um, however big it is that's what the important thing is and i, I truly got to thank you guys for that like it's been a super awesome ride and i'm i'm definitely gonna keep doing it um and i really love doing it so so thank you all right so that's that's all i gotta say um it's like it's like 1 30 in the morning for me um this I, I don't even know how long this video has been like i've had to stop recording and start recording on my phone because it doesn't have the best storage and i think it's probably going to be like an hour of uncut footage so we'll see how much that is cut <laughs> hopefully like not too long um, but if you guys stick around if you guys just stuck around like that's awesome like you guys are the best <laughs> um i'm tired <laughs> um but hey school's done so i can't complain um so yeah like i promise the next devlog will not be this long it will not be nearly this long um but again it will be different um so yeah so uh that's it thank you guys for watching um and i'll see you in the next devlog